Catch the laughs with America's favorite animated family, The Simpsons, Thursday at 7. This is KRIB-TV, Fox 26, Houston. And now, Fox News at 9 with Fran Fawcett, Mike Barajas, meteorologist Robert Smith, and Mark Berman with sports. The deadliest train wreck in Amtrak history claims scores of lives. Some may have been Houstonians. And President Clinton takes the wraps off the biggest health care proposal since Social Security. More on the President's much-anticipated announcement in just a moment. But first, an early morning tragedy in Alabama. An Amtrak train carrying sleepy passengers plunged into the water after an aging bridge gave way. The death toll is mounting. Let's go right to Richard Barr at the scene for the very latest. Richard? Well, hello, Mike. An exasperating and tragic day here outside of Mobile, Alabama, and all day a frantic search for survivors. And at this hour, that search for survivors still continues. Now, let's take a look at the latest casualty count. At this time, 43 people are confirmed dead. Possibly 10 people are still missing, as authorities try to find out what caused Amtrak's worst rail disaster. A rail car dangles off a snap track, and half of it swallowed in a murky bayou. Another car is completely submerged. Officials say a bridge collapsed early Wednesday morning after the train made its last stop in Mobile. The cars themselves were strewn much like a child would stroll a toy train. Crews search desperately for survivors. We will stay on site and at the scene until everybody is recovered from this wreckage. This was a scene repeated over and over. Grief-stricken relatives find out the bad news about loved ones. Many survivors were taken to area hospitals, then released. They had stories to tell. Sam Dean of Dallas says he knew something just wasn't right. And, and when it bumped two or three times, I could tell something was wrong then. But then right after that, then it stopped all of a sudden, like hitting that wall right there. There are reports that a barge was in the area shortly before the accident. It's rumored the barge struck the bridge. There was a barge in the region. We know there was a barge. And that's being followed up as one possible investigative need. Now again tonight, no word on exactly what caused, caused this tragedy, this train derailment. Now authorities say they'll be searching here throughout the night. Authorities have run into a bit of a snag. That's because one of the passenger cars is unstable and divers cannot get to it. Uh, authorities believe that many of the missing people are in that car. Now as far as the search overnight goes, uh, officials here say as long as they have searchlights, they'll be searching. In Mobile, this is Richard Varr, Fox News. Back to you, Mike. Thank you, Richard. Amtrak has set up a toll-free hotline. You can call 1-800-872-7245. President Clinton tonight finally unveils his plan to reform the nation's health care. His address before a joint session of Congress began just security. a little over an hour ago. This health care system of ours is badly broken, and it is time to fix it. We must make this our most urgent priority, giving every American health security, health care that can never be taken away, health care that is always there. We can reform the costliest and most wasteful system on the face of the earth without enacting new broad-based taxes. Under our plan, every American would receive a health care security card that will guarantee a comprehensive package of benefits over the course of an entire lifetime, roughly comparable to the benefit package offered by most Fortune 500 companies. With this card, if you lose your job or you switch jobs, you're covered. If you leave your job to start a small business, you're covered. If you're an early retiree, you're covered. Even if it's a life-threatening illness, you're covered. And if an insurance company tries to drop you for any reason, you will still be covered because that will be illegal. That we must maintain the Medicare program. To have a combination of private market forces and a sound public policy that will support that competition but limit the rate at which prices can exceed the rate of inflation and population growth. 
If the, the president said quality will increase, choice will remain, but the doctors will have a choice of several plans he did not elaborate. Mr. Clinton said we must all take responsibility, including drug companies, insurance companies, and doctors. However, the president was short on specifics like how much it will cost, how we will pay for it, and exactly who will pay for it. However, he did say tobacco taxes will go up. Of course, all of us are going to be affected by this, and tonight it's a hot topic of conversation at health facilities around the nation. Reporter Sue Spack is at Herman Hospital with people who have a keen interest in the president's plan. Sue? Fran, the president's health plan would most benefit the working poor and the underinsured. Mr. Clinton said tonight that everybody knows somebody who has worked hard, played by the rules, and still has fallen through the cracks. We hear a lot of talk about that group. I've been watching this speech with a family who puts a face on it. You know that one, don't you? <laughs> For most of Christiana Icaza's 14 months, hospitals have been her home. She's never tasted food and never will. She's been fed intravenously, which caused a liver condition as a side effect. Doctors say it will kill her within a year. <laughs> Add to that heartache, financial devastation when the insurance her father had through his job maxed out at half a million dollars. They had to turn to Medicaid, and that too had its price. There's not that, that many choices out there. You A, um, quit your job, which that's what I had to do. <laughs> Christiana's mother had to quit college. It's heartbreaking in the sense that you know she's not going to make it, and you go through each day knowing she's not going to make it, but <laughs> she, um, we're lucky to have her, and the doctor... Sal and Stephanie Akaza, you just heard the president. What do you think of what he had to say? Well, I thought he was a very good pep rally, if you would, of um, his health care reform. Um, he very well has addressed all the problems that uh, we've encountered. Um, um, however, I think that uh, he fell short, in my opinion, of giving um, some of the solutions, such as um, what um, the quality of, of care that we would get. Um, something that's going to have to be addressed more aggressively addressed, I think, by him. Um, but uh, I, th I thought overall it was a very good speech, and uh, I think we have all can agree that there is a problem. We all want to work together towards a solution, but I just want maybe a little bit more facts, if you would, before I can jump on it and buy the program. Yeah, you tried to give some assurances about quality. Not enough for you, obviously? No, I, I think that for us, and when you have a chronically um, ill um, ch child, I think that um, quality of life is the most important thing. Um, I think that um, quality of life for us m means being with the caretakers that you have come to know and that you feel comfortable with. I don't think that at this point I buy that um, by having a socialized, you know, health care home. I don't, I don't think that um, I buy the fact that, you know, you're going to be able to go wherever it is that they send you to. Um, I think I need some more reassurance as far as that's concerned. Well, thank you very much for your comments and all our best to Christiana. Back to you, Mike. Thank you, Sue. Health care is a major industry in Houston, and so the president's plan is being analyzed closely in our city. Olga Campos reports. Houston is home to the largest medical center in the world, 41 institutions with a workforce of approximately 57,000. Here, there is strong support for the president's plan, which stresses preventative care as the key to long-term savings. What we're talking about is the avoidance of disease, uh, helping to replace the curing of disease. And that's so much better, not only in costs of money, but in costs of increased productivity. Yet there's a large segment of Houston's population which might not be eligible for any health care benefits, a situation viewed by then-candidate Bill Clinton when he toured this same clinic almost two years ago. They are immigrants who often don't speak English, earn low wages, and some are in the country illegally. Now they're caught in the middle of the health care debate. Should those who are here illegally be eligible for health care services? And what about their children? Less than 20% of our children are immunized on schedule. I'm very concerned about uh, whether or not they'll be included. And even if they are included, if the perception is that they are not welcome in the system, they won't come. 90% of the patients who come through Bentob Hospital are indigent. There's also concern that they won't be able to afford the president's proposed co-payment. At the present time, we have sliding scale for our patients where they pay on a part, uh, part pay basis, and many of them cannot pay the 5 and $10. And so I don't think it'll be any different under this health care plan. 
Health care providers point out for the president's plan to be effective, it must be accompanied by education so that Americans will understand what services they're eligible for and take advantage of those services in order to lead more healthy, productive lives. In Houston, Olga Campos, Fox News. A civil war at the U of H between athletics and academics. It heated up today when the school's faculty senate voted in favor of dissolving the entire athletics department. Andrea Watkins has the story. The vote was 25-4, 15 against, one abstention, motion passes. The faculty senate, 55 members elected to represent more than 900, says U of H should stop participating in intercollegiate athletics. I think the program no longer adds luster to our national image. In fact, the violations in Bill Yeomans last year and the violations disclosed last spring have probably damaged the university. By UH Sports has embarrassed the school this year. The head football coach was fired amid allegations of impropriety, and controversy erupted when the new basketball coach got an enormous pay raise after it was alleged his salary was low because he was black. His salary now equals the national median, while UH teachers say they're 10% below median. To add insult to injury, UH Athletics has operated in red ink recently, pulling money from academics. It didn't this year only because of a huge donation, but the department still collects $2 million a year in student fees. Imagine how we would like, to, how, how we would react if the City Council of Houston levied a tax on us to support the Oilers, the Rockets, and the Astros because nobody bothered to go to their games. Students are divided on the issue. We are suffering. We are the guys who are suffering because we're not getting uh, funded. A lot of athletic scholarships help students get through school. Without that, a lot of people wouldn't be able to go to school. University President James Pickering says sports will stay, but he's taking faculty concerns seriously. He says to expect a clean and financially responsible program in future years. Andrea Watkins, Fox News. Our Mark Berman will have the athletic department's response to the faculty senate's action a bit later in this newscast. And coming up next, the Houston Police Department's game plan against drugs. On City Under Siege, aggravated robberies in Montrose land this suspect on this week's Robber's Row. I have an MD from Harvard. I am board certified in cardiothoracic medicine. I have been awarded citations from seven different medical boards. When someone goes into that chapel and they pray to God that their wife doesn't miscarry or that their daughter doesn't bleed to death, who do you think they're praying to? You ask me if I have a God complex? I am God. Malice. Rated R. Sneak preview Saturday. Can do. Now what exactly does that mean? Timberland, waterproof boots, shoes, and clothing. An innocent man is gunned down. Which way did they take off? And you'll follow police as the mystery unfolds. He was shot in this van. Saturday at 7 on Fox 26. One day after a phony fax on gangs heightened fears throughout the city is doing a better job gathering intelligence to go after suspected gang members. We use the top zero tolerance things around the city to, to bring the crime levels down and then try to use the beat officers to hold the, le hold the level down and then only would go back with one of those uh, if it got out of hand. In 1988, HPD had identified only about 23 gangs in the Houston area. Today, that number has increased to 196 gangs. Nucci says civic clubs working with HPD to identify problems in their communities are helping in that battle against gangs. On Monday, the mayor ruled that five City Hall veterans could remain on the ballot, even though their paperwork was incomplete. 
But today, 10 would-be city council candidates are declared ineligible because they failed to properly fill out the required paperwork. Among those disqualified, former city council member Beverly Clark. Her application apparently did not include her address. I think it's politics. Uh, I'm going to see it through to the end, and I'm going to fight to have my name on the ballot. Clark has retained attorney Jack Raines to represent her in court. He is a former chief elections officer for the state of Texas. Transcripts of 275 of President Lyndon Johnson's phone conversations in the days following President John Kennedy's assassination are released today. The boxes were given to the media at the LBJ Library in Austin. They include Johnson's condolences to the Kennedy family, although some conversations with Jackie Kennedy were deemed too personal and are withheld. One of the first calls made aboard Air Force One was to Nellie Conley. Transcripts show Johnson at first wanted a Texas panel to investigate the assassination, but quickly changed his mind to favor a federal panel. Boris Yeltsin has had a generally good day against the hardliners he's trying to oust from Russia's government. Yeltsin has won the support of the defense minister, and conditions in Moscow are normal despite an appeal for a nationwide strike by those who oppose the Russian president. Yesterday, he dissolved parliament and called for new elections. Members of parliament responded by voting to oust Yeltsin. A less than welcome homecoming for John Demyanyuk. Fellow passengers called him a Nazi and murderer on the trip home from Israel. Protesters gathered at Demyanyuk's Cleveland home this morning, but he did not go there. After seven years in an Israeli prison, he was acquitted of being Nazi death camp guard Ivan the Terrible. Now Demyanyuk is fighting deportation and to regain his U.S. citizenship. Up next, a hot first day of fall. Robert Smith is working on the latest forecast. And the Cougars react to demands that the athletic department be wiped out. Mark Berman, sports, next. We are in the forefront of attempting to develop entrepreneurship as a, as a way of life here. MCI understands that this is a two-way street. The businesses in the community band together through the chamber. When you're positive, save money. You always get MCI's best price. MCI always does what's right for you. It's helped us grow small businesses into large businesses. It's not just one business out there, it's the whole community trying to make Sioux City a better place to live. Here's how to remodel your kitchen in four easy steps. Ah. Step one! Two, go to Builder Square to get advice on how to design your project. Three, pick up what you need. They've got over four million cubic feet of project completion stuff. They install too. Oh yeah, you do that. Step four, enjoy. The play is done. Builder Square, the warehouse with everything for your house. It's like clockwork. I pack the food, Rex navigates, Jeff forgets his medication. So, like most years, we'll drop by the Walgreens in Keene, New Hampshire where we're regular customers, despite living three states away. With over 1,800 satellite-linked pharmacies nationwide, Jeff's prescription is always nearby. And that's good to know, because we all forget things now and then. Some people are just a little more consistent. There are certain chores you would only ask a diesel to handle. That's about to change. Drivers of full-size pickups pretty much know what they're in for. That's about to change. Bad blood at U of H. Here is Mark Furman with sports. Okay, Mike and Fran, as we told you earlier in the show, the University of Houston Faculty Senate voted to abolish intercollegiate athletics at the U of H. The vote is not binding and the Senate has no real power, but their voice is heard. University President James Pickering made it clear big-time athletics will continue at the U of H. I think the decisions on whether to have a quality intercollegiate athletic uh, program on this campus has certainly been made by me, and I think the faculty are saying, look, we want a clean act, clean it up, and let's get on with it. The vote by the faculty Senate did not catch athletic director Bill Carr off guard. I understand the frustrations that members of our faculty feel because of some funding limitations over the last several years. So in, in that context, uh, one should not be surprised by a concern uh, as they've expressed today. 
With the firing of head football coach John Jenkins and all the negative publicity that went with it last spring, the Cougars' new head coach, Kim Helton, believes this vote is directly related to the way the university suffered. This one certainly has suffered a great deal with having to support this athletic program that hasn't uh, in turn done a lot for the university or has maybe not done as much as it could have done or should have done. I think the faculty senate uh, did what they think is right. I think next year when they vote, it'll probably be uh, 25 to 15 in favor of having athletics. Basketball coach Alvin Brooks told me today he is not offended by the vote to abolish athletics at UH. They're concerned for academics is, is proper, and that's priority, and I think the discussion of how academics and athletics uh, fit and the chemistry between the two and how we can benefit one another uh, is healthy. Saturday in Ann Arbor, redshirt freshman Chuck Clements, who got extensive playing time against Tulsa, will get the start at quarterback for the Houston Cougars against Michigan. UH's number one guy, Jimmy Klingler, is down with a sprained ankle. Head coach Kim Helton has elected not to take any chances. Probably the situation is such right now that uh, Jimmy Klingler probably could play. You know, in the game, be hobbled, uh, maybe taking a chance to get him hurt and lose him for the season. I'm not willing to do that. The Cougars are 34-point underdogs when they play at Michigan Saturday. Wednesday's Loyola workout has come and gone, and Warren Moon returned to his spot as the team's number one quarterback. Moon was replaced by Cody Carlson during the loss to San Diego Sunday, and there are those in Houston who believe the Oilers now have a quarterback controversy. Warren is not, I'm not offended, but uh, I'm not surprised. I mean, I, I'm, you, you almost kind of wait for these things to happen, and uh, I kind of knew when, when I was brought out of the game it was op opening up a can of worms, but what can you do? At the Dome, the Giants have beaten the Astros 1-0. Kirk Manwaring's RBI base double base off Pete Harnish McGee in the seventh the scores Willie McGee run. for the game's only run. Montreal leads the Braves 5-1 in the seventh. Uh, if they go on, if the Braves go on to lose that game, the Giants move to within in two and a half games of first place Atlanta in the West. And we'll update it in the rest of baseball in a half hour. Thank you, Mark. Okay. Thanks, Mark. And Robert Smith, yeah. we're two hours into fall, and everybody wants to know where the cool weather well, is. Step outdoors and be sure and grab your sweater. It's refreshing. <laughs> sure. uh, not quite. Give it a couple of weeks, maybe. Uh, we'll be back with a forecast, and it is the first evening of autumn when we come back. The LS400 is consistently rated over cars costing thousands more. So you may wonder why Lexus made over 50 new refinements. If at first you succeed, try, try again. For details on the summer custom tailored lease program, see your Lexus dealer. Nobody does it like you, the way that you do, Hoover, nobody does it like you. Well, we came to Ikea because we're getting married in three weeks. Three weeks? And we still don't have a bed. <sighs> yeah, really nice, right? I would say I'm pretty nervous. <clears throat> Ikea's cool because they have tons of styles to choose from. All of our friends are married. All of them. All this stuff sort of fits together, and it gives you sort of new ways of looking at rooms. I won't be able to leave the toilet seat up. They don't pressure you at Ikea, which is really nice. Ben doesn't respond well to pressure. Are you spending so much time taking care of employee paperwork that you feel like you have 900 employees instead of 19? Why not turn it all over to Administaff? Administaff. I can take your badge right now for initiating an illegal investigation. They're trying to solve a murder here! Hit the water. Feel the pressure. And brace for impact. Because these two cops are about to make waves. Bruce Willis, Sarah Jessica Parker. Striking distance. Rated R at theaters now. Hi again, everyone. Well, right on cue, this is the first evening of uh, autumn. It began a couple of hours ago at 722 Central Daylight Time. We look across the U.S. of A. We find autumn-like weather, 60s and 50s and even 40s across the northern tier of the U.S. But in the south, 
Ahead of the frontal boundary, it's still very summer-like at this hour. We find 9 p.m. readings still in the 80s and even 90s across the south. Here at Houston's Intercontinental Airport at 9 p.m., the sky is clear, but we are anticipating some increasing cloud cover as all that low-level moisture continu continues streaming into our viewing area. We could see some patchy fog developing toward morning, so do be mindful of that. 83 degrees, still very warm and balmy, 74%. On the relative humidity, the wind is still out of the southeast at 8, and the pressure on the way up now at 30.05 inches of mercury. Very unseasonably warm day, the last day of summer for this year. 75 was the morning low, 93 was the high. This is what we normally expect to find on the last day of summer, a low of 67, a high of 88 degrees, and officially at the airport, 100th of an inch of rainfall. Now, forecast highs for the nation tomorrow. This is what we are anticipating uh, on a national level. There will be some autumn-like weather on the first full day of autumn. We're anticipating 60s and 70s across the northern U.S., but once again, there's a frontal boundary that kind of separates these air masses right along in here, and as a result, everybody to the south of that front will see no uh, such thing as autumn tomorrow. It'll be a little while longer before autumn-like weather prevails. We will see mostly 80s and 90s across the south. Very warm mid to upper degree, 90-degree uh, readings across much of the south. Here's your weather map for tomorrow, first full day of uh, 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 autumn. High pressure will build behind that front, and as a result, it will be much drier and cooler from the Great Lakes all the way back to the northern plains and into the Pacific Northwest. But once again, ahead of that front, very warm, very balmy, and with all that moisture in the atmosphere, we're anticipating just a little bit of afternoon shower activity. So here's your forecast. Tonight, we're calling for increasing cloud cover. There will be some morning fog creeping in, so do be careful of that if you're getting out on the highways and byways toward rush hour in the morning, a low of 74 and a light and variable wind. And then for tomorrow, a mixture of sun and clouds, about the same thing we saw today. If anything, maybe a few more clouds, a 20% chance of showers in the afternoon, a high of 94, a southeasterly wind at about 10, and the extended forecast for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Not, not much change. By Sunday, we may see a little bit of rain moving back into the forecast. And Mike, the computer models are suggesting that maybe next week we'll start to see an overall change in the weather that is, say, a little more rain mm -hmm. and maybe slightly cooler temperatures. All right, thank you very much, Robert. Now let's join Fran for a look at what's ahead on tonight's City Under Siege. Well, Mike, she was on the street selling crack to pay for her own habit. She asked for help. Before she got it, she landed behind bars. Scotty Barrett's exclusive report on Vanessa and what help is available for drug addicts in, in jail. That's ahead on City Under Siege. More news in a moment. Man. Did you have nightmares that you were going to be captured? Real life fugitives. You really can't ever relax. On the next Bertice Berry Show. Tomorrow morning at 9 on Fox 26. Are you ready to take on the American border gladiators? No, thank you. You managed to successfully cross the Interstate 5 freeway dodge with only one direction. How did you do it, Rodolfo? No, thank you. And special guest Edward James Olmos joins an all-new culture class Saturday at 11 on Fox. No, thank you. Chrysler LHS so impresses the critics, they praise it wherever they go. To the ballpark, to the theater. And with its high-performance engine, leather trim, driver and passenger airbags, ABS and traction control, all under 31,000, they most often praise it all the way to the bank. Chrysler LHS, the American luxury car, is now in the fast lane at your Chrysler Plymouth dealer. What is Newton? Newton is digital. Newton is personal. Newton is magic. Newton is as powerful as a computer. Newton is as simple as a piece of paper. Newton is intelligent. Newton learns about you, understands you. Newton is news. Newton can receive a page. It sends faxes and soon electronic mail. Newton lets you communicate with the whole world, and if there's anything this world could use, it is more communication. I got two words for you, Bud Light. Oh, I Bud Light this much. Oh, what I like about you. Houston is hot. Bud Light is cold. Bud Light. Bud Light. Bud Light. This is Houston's remedy for humidity. Nothing goes me down like a Bud Light. Bud Light. Just ask for it. Houston, bring on the Bud Light. An innocent man is gunned down. Which way they take off? And you'll follow police as the mystery unfolds. He was shot in his van. Saturday at 7 on Fox 26. Flames coming from the shuttle's tail after it landed this morning are no worry. NASA says the usual hot gas from the exhaust may have been yellow instead of white because of high humidity. Discovery and its five astronauts touched down just before 3 a.m. 
It's the first shuttle landing in darkness at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. And that's our report. Thanks for being with us, everyone. Please join Linda Cheek Heinrich, Jose Guignan, and Matt Levine tomorrow morning for Fox News 7 a.m. And don't forget the live lotto drawing at 9.59 tonight. But right now, City Under Siege is next. Check this out. Bally's is offering our pay-as-you-go program at the low enrollment fee of $49 for an alternate day plan. Once you join, pay only $15 a month for as long as you want. No outrageous membership fees, no long-term commitments. Just $15 a month for aerobics, swimming, jogging, and the most advanced equipment available, like our 30-minute workout program. Join Bally's pay-as-you-go program now. An offer like this won't last forever. Call 1-800-937-1772. Ride with the men and women who put themselves on the line every day. Cops, Saturday at 7. This is KRIV-TV, Fox 26, Houston. doesn't know what he's carrying. That's on him here. They're very exact at it. They're detailed. Welcome back. I'm Fran Fawcett. This is City Under Siege. She roamed the streets selling crack to support her own drug habit. She told City Under Siege that she needed help but wasn't sure where to turn. Now this self-confessed drug addict named Vanessa is finally getting help in the Harris County Jail. Our Scotty Barrett, who first introduced us to Vanessa, brings us the latest chapter in her troubled life and her attempt to make changes. I'm an addict. I'm not a criminal. When I look into your eyes, I'm trying to find out how there's no way to say it. She called herself Vanessa, and she admitted she'd sold crack behind this Fiesta store with other illegal drug vendors in full view of security cameras. Are you on drugs, ma'am? Sure. Are you really? Sure. You want to talk to me? I've been on drugs now seven years old. I mean, 13 years old, seven years ago. Yeah. Been doing it ever since, off and on. You know, I yeah. stop, start again, stop, start again. What kind of drugs? Where are you at? Crack? Yeah. A twenty dollar rock is ten dollars, okay? For for me and other people who sell. And uh we but we sell it to other people for the whole twenty. That makes us get two. And it's like it just never stops if you don't want it. But Vanessa says she wanted it to stop. So after our interview late that August night, we went back to try to find her. But she had just been evicted from her apartment. We finally found her in the Harris County Jail weeks later, and she agreed to talk to us again about her addiction. Spelled out. She had spelled. to get all pretty. What, oh, she getting pretty? <laughs> Hi, Sonny. Hi. Change it! You feeling better now? Man, I feel so much better. Wow. I hope I don't get too much bigger. <laughs> Woo! Oh, you're not fat. Mm -hmm. You just been out on the street. You were... I was thin. I was, well... You were skeletal. Was I? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That comes from weeks from not eating. Weeks, but not by not because it was I, I wasn't hungry. I was just too busy, too hot. Didn't have an appetite. Mm -hmm. And here I eat everything inside. <laughs> it's beautiful. Out on the street, Vanessa showed us where she had cut her wrists. It was a painful and unsuccessful suicide attempt. Well, there was a mirror broken. I was crying. I was upset. And I tried to cut it. It wasn't sharp enough. Sure. It wasn't sharp enough. They look a little bit better. They look a little better. Yeah, they look a little better. Yeah. Like, it's not just the scars on, on, on the, the outside. There's, uh, there's plenty on the inside, and there's still some of them still bleeding. Yeah. You know? I've I've got I need a lot of therapy. And out on the street before she was arrested again. Her wish? 
really do wish that you could do that. I really do. Because I know the way I am and my talent, I could have anything in this world that I did not have a drug problem. So we had been in search of Vanessa for weeks before we finally found her in jail, talking to those who work the streets in the neighborhood who might know Vanessa. Hey, can I talk to you? Will you please leave me alone, please? But no one would tell us where we could find her. Your body can relax more deeply, and your breathing becomes easy and regular, easy and regular. What we had found for Vanessa, several free drug rehabilitation programs. There is choices where new therapy techniques are used, ear acupuncture and neurobiofeedback, literally listening to your brain. We also found the shoulder, where drug abusers who are pregnant can come in immediately, no waiting list. And Vanessa was not alone out on the street selling crack. She told us she was pregnant. If you'd known about the shoulder, if you'd known gone. about choices, you would have Because I lost my baby. And everything. You know, when we met you out on the street, you were high. Oh, uh, yeah, I was very high. <laughs> I was very high. You, you made the statement, and of course, I don't want to delve into your personal life, Paul, mm -hmm. but you made the statement that you were pregnant again. Yeah, I lost my baby. I had a miscarriage. Vanessa has two other children who she was forced to sign over to Children's Protective Services. Her son was given to her grandmother and her daughter placed in a foster home and the foster parents want to adopt. They're just not mine anymore. I lost everything because of the drugs. I'm tired of losing. I wish you would have found me. <laughs> I really do. And before we could find her, Vanessa was busted again because she was in possession of a crack pipe. I know I had. I know I had was paraphernalia. That tells you I'm just an addict out there doing that to support my husband. Now she faces 20 years in prison because she has been here before. Her previous crimes, drug related. Well, right now I'm in intensive substance abuse tank. Okay, we, um, I signed up for it as soon as I got here. That's probably the safest place for her right now. I mean, she could be dead, right? And Harris County Jail Chaplain Cheryl Archer says she's seen Vanessa here before. Mm -hmm. She directs the drug rehabilitation program mm -hmm. in the jail. I think the only way you can treat an addiction is to get them to see the very truth of where their lives are going. It's like, um... Women who want help, you know, everybody in the, in the group wants rehabilitation, wants recovery. We have meetings every day. If they're willing to accept that and to confess it, then they can get help. If they're willing to, they have to be willing. I'm just trying to deal with it. I feel a lot better. <laughs> I do, because I'm going to go to school and I'll find me a job. I'm going to change this time. I always said if I ever went back to jail, when I got out, I wasn't going to do it, and I'm not. Because this saved my life. Going to jail saved your life? Yeah, it did. It, it saved me. I feel like I'm saved, you know? I want rehab. I don't, this doesn't work. I've been here, I've done this, and it doesn't work. I need rehab. I'm an addict. I'm not a criminal. For City Under Siege, I'm Scotty Barrett. Still ahead, his mother told him to stay away from those two boys, but he didn't, and it cost him his life. We'll have the winning numbers in tonight's $10 million lotto drawing live at 9.59.
Macy's Fall Sale and Show is on now. Tune in for the best buys of the season. Men's INC leather jackets are $199.99. Beaded tops, jackets, and dresses for misses, women, and petites are $79.90 to $129.90. Women's Nine West mid-heel pumps are $39.99. Infants' mine alone cotton coveralls are two for $28. During the Fall Sale and Show, now through Sunday, September 26th at Macy's. Can do. Now, what exactly does that mean? This segment of the news is brought to you by Blockbuster Video. Every kind of takeout has its own box. Chinese. Pizza. Fun. Nobody has more fun than Blockbuster, so if you want great takeout without the calories, make it a Blockbuster night. What would you do if you were stuck in the same day over and over? Don't drive angry. Bill Murray. Yes! Andy McDowell. Groundhog Day from Columbia TriStar Home Video, rated PG. Repeated warnings were not enough to save the life of a 10-year-old boy. His mother had told her son to stay away from the two troublemakers. Now he's dead. And as Roosevelt Leftwich reports, the suspects aren't much older than the victim. Sabrina Wakefield says her son was a good boy who liked to play in the front yard. But they always warned him about two older boys, one 17, the other 12, who Wakefield says caused nothing but trouble. And we did it several times. Several times we did it, and he even told them that, uh, that no, he can't leave the area. He knows he stays in Carlin distance. Police say Rodney was taken from his front yard to this house on Carpenter Street. The older boys took him into an upstairs closet that had two shotguns inside. The 12-year-old uh, did ask for oral sex from the 10-year-old. And as the 10-year-old was leaving, uh, he was shot. Folks in the neighborhood say the 17-year-old was a bad seed. They said he would walk these streets and try to get the younger children to do his bidding. The victim was someone who stood up to him. He was in trouble. He did. Was Neighbors say the 17-year-old was constantly threatening people, especially the younger children. And they say he always carried a gun. Yeah, he shot a gun off twice mm -hmm. up near... Um, he said he was going to kill the boy next door, mm -hmm. my neighbor, and he, I called the police that day, mm -hmm. and uh, they didn't do anything. Boy, the boy's not crazy. He's just stupid. He, yeah, he, is. he ain't crazy. He ain't crazy. He ain't going to get out of this on the insane plea because he ain't crazy. The boy's just stupid, mm -hmm. and he thinks he's, he thinks he's a terrorist. Police have charged both juveniles with aggravated murder. The victim's mother hopes her son's death will make others more aware of what their kids are doing in the streets. I feel that these individuals are sick. And they, uh, as far as the use of the gun, it's really, you know, a tragic incident. And I, I think really the gun should be cleaned up. That in Akron, Ohio. At first glance, it appeared to be a tragic fire. Upon closer examination, it looked more like murder and arson. Curtis Lee Foster Jr. told Muskogee, Oklahoma police that he was the only one to wake up and escape when a fire started last night. His wife and their four young children were not so lucky. Their bodies were found in the house. Now, Foster has been arrested on suspicion of murder and arson. In Ohio, an equally horrifying crime, police are searching for two white men and a pregnant woman who set a black man on fire in the city of Loveland. Milton Metcalf had gone to a convenience store and bought gas for the supposedly stranded motorists on Monday night. When he returned, one of the men doused him with gasoline. The other tossed a match at him. Metcalf is in critical condition tonight. In Florida, two white men were convicted of a similar crime. They abducted on New Year's and set a black tourist on fire. Crime may not pay, but it sure does cost, and it's not just a drop in tourism as Florida might experience following a string of attacks on motorists or visitors there. Taxpayers, consumers, businesses, state and local governments are also picking up part of the tab. Kelly Arena explains from New York. More than 15 million Americans were victims of serious crimes last year. 
The FBI says that's 4% lower than the year before. Still, that's not the public perception. Crime is costing the nation more than ever. By one estimate, $150 billion a year. You have to take into consideration not only what type, who the victims of the crimes are or whatever else, but you do have to consider that, that economic factor. Medical costs, lost worker productivity, property damage, lower property values, tourism, even higher consumer prices to pay for security and stolen merchandise. Those costs of crime are hard to nail down, but others have been measured. The most recent figures show that federal, state, and local governments spend $75 billion a year on the criminal justice system. Personal theft and household crimes cost victims $13 billion. Credit card fraud, half a billion. And then there's drugs, the number one crime problem and perhaps the most expensive. It seems to be just a lot of children uh, virtually on their own. And uh, uh, you, you superimpose the drug problem on top of that lack of supervision on the availability of guns, and it is a formula for a disaster and, and mayhem. In the last three years, New York City has added 5,000 police officers. It now employs about 30,000, more than ever before. But New York City ranks 18th in the nation for violent crime and spends about $2.5 billion a year for law enforcement. Officers complain about the lack of a civilian support staff, outdated technology, and a correctional system that does not rehabilitate. The recidivism rate stands at 66 percent. Police say that the city needs more money to really turn the corner on crime, but no one is counting on an increase in funds anytime soon. Kelly Arena, New York. Coming up, promises, promises, reportedly unfulfilled at some modeling agencies. One of the officers convicted of beating motorist Rodney King gets ready to do his time. Milk does a body good with vitamin A to help keep skin smooth, calcium for strong bones, and protein to help build muscle. When you drink milk, it shows. She likes milk and it shows. It does a body good. She Truly great performances are few and far between. But right now, when you come into Best Buy, you'll get 0% financing, no payments, no interest for six months on all TVs, VCRs, speakers, stereo components, and camcorders. So come into Best Buy today, because this is one number that won't last very long. The Cadillac DeVille has the safety answers anti-lock braking system, advanced airbag technology, and a 200 horsepower V8. DeVille also has the financial answers. Now you can receive a $3,000 special bonus from Cadillac when you purchase a new 1993 DeVille. And a $3,000 bonus on the Cadillac DeVille makes a safe investment even safer. See your Gulf Coast Cadillac dealers. The Renaissance is a period in history emphasizing the classical values of reason and intellect. It was a very civilized society indeed, with a great appreciation for the fine arts and fine cuisine. A period marked by the chivalric code of honor that governed socially acceptable behavior. Oddly enough, the Renaissance occurs in Texas. Weekends October 2nd to November 14th. Pick up half price tickets for opening weekend at Ticketmaster. on City Under Siege, modeling agencies promising a glamorous lifestyle and plenty of jobs, really maybe offering nothing but pipe dreams. One New York official is now calling for a crackdown on three modeling agencies that have cheated consumers out of their dreams and money. Details from Fox reporter Amy Atkins. Those who thirst for the fame and fortune of the supermodel world can and will do almost anything to break in. Just don't get your foot in the wrong door. I was devastated and extremely annoyed. Elise Ashby went to Judith Models in this Upper East Side high-rise. Elise says she was told she would need photographs, which would cost $275. Um, seven photographs were chosen, which she wanted blown up for another $150. 
after the blow-ups had been made, she then told me in order to have my composite cards done, 500 would cost $195. And she did not get a single modeling job. Judith Models, according to the Consumer Affairs Department, is one of the three worst agencies in the city. These three modeling agencies are a complete scam. In addition no to Judith Models, the city is cracking down on model development and LG Models. No the agencies advertised jobs, then tricked and pressured consumers into spending hundreds of dollars on photographs to land the job. But all consumers got were inferior photographs or no photographs, and rarely did they get any jobs. Esme did get a job through Judith Models. It's an eight-day job, $300 a day, and uh, I haven't been paid. It's been over eight months now. A dead giveaway that you're dealing with an unscrupulous modeling agency is if that agency asks for money up front for photographs or anything else. It is illegal for an agency to charge a would-be model an advance fee. Maybe the scam is to get you in, get the money, and then leave town after. Beth Ann Hardison is a well-respected model manager. She says if a firm is legit, it will be listed in the International Directory of Model and Talent Agencies. Don't listen just to that guy. Don't give up your money. Please do not give up your money. The three agencies cited by the city could face thousands of dollars in fines and might have their licenses revoked. Amy Atkins, Fox News. A convicted officer prepares to go to prison. Former LAPD Sergeant Stacy Kuhn, convicted in the beating of motorist Rodney King, says he'll head to prison Monday with a pure heart. Today, Kuhn gave his final interview on a Los Angeles radio station. Despite his conviction, Kuhn maintains that he did the right thing. A federal jury sentenced the former cop and a fellow officer, Lawrence Powell, to two and a half years in prison. Police say tonight's Robbers Row suspect is reeking havoc in the Montrose area. He's apparently hit several convenience stores. His latest crime was captured on videotape. It was a little after midnight when the suspect walked into this store on September 17th. He pulled out a knife and ordered the clerk to open the register. After getting cash and some change, the suspect fled. If you think you can identify this man or know anything about the case, please call HPD's Robbery Division at 731-5700 or Crime Stoppers at 222 tips after 7 in the morning. Coming up, this is one fish story you've got to see to believe. Thursday, it's a brand new night of comedy on Fox. They like to march. Starting with The Simpsons. Then Sinbad's trading bachelorhood. Are you policemen? For parenthood. <laughs> on an all-new Sinbad show. And they knew it would be too shocking, but they just couldn't resist. The bad boys of comedy are taking on the king of pop. <laughs> on an all-new in living color. Then Herman's got a date with the Fly Girls. Ow. On an all-new Herman's Head. Thursday, beginning at 7 on Fox 26. Okay, pull away from the curb and take a left at the end of the block. Yes, sir. Is this a new trooper? Uh, yes, sir. It's my mom's. Tell you what, take a right instead. Yes, sir. If ever there was an excuse for driving a little bit out of your way, this is it. Very nice. Wait. I didn't get to parallel park. You're right. The Suzu Trooper. Practically amazing. Very nice. Every day should start with Quaker Roads. Every day should feel this good. And nothing cold can make you feel like Quaker Oatmeal could. Nothing cold can steam you up and help keep you rolling all morning like the one and only hot Quaker Oatmeal. Nourishment secure, certain air perfect. Every day should be. Why not keep on rolling? And the best way to keep things rolling is to keep working harder. To roll back prices. Roll back, keep on rolling. Look around. There's a lot more that's a lot less at Walmart. Gotta keep on rolling. Roll back America. We never stop rolling back prices. Walmart. Gotta keep on rolling. Always the low price. Always. Now for a look at some of tonight's news, sports, and weather, let's go to my colleagues, Mark Berman, Robert Smith, and Mike Barajas. Mike? Thank you, Fran. Some fishermen got more than they bargained for when they cast their nets. Santa Barbara, California.
part of the day's catch, a 15-foot-long great white shark. The giant bounty weighed more than a ton. A man reportedly bought the carcass for $10,000, then had a tow truck take it to Bakersfield, where it reportedly will be pickled as the owner waits for a museum deal. Rockville, Maryland, the Humvee is new and improved. Today, a branch of the Commerce Department unveiled its latest design. The robotic Humvee is being used to evaluate and refine automated driver control functions. The machine was originally designed as part of a test program for the Defense Department. It's a controversy that is definitely not clear-cut. The latest craze sweeping the nation features clear products, sodas, detergents, beer, even gasoline. Manufacturers claim clear products are better than the traditional colored products, but critics say that clear products are just another marketing strategy and buying should be based on price and quality. A tobacco company's representative is catching heat again. Attorney generals from more than two dozen states are asking the Federal Trade Commission to ban R.J. Reynolds' Joe Camel. They claim the cartoon animal encourages young people to smoke and undermines the laws banning cigarette sales to minors. The Reynolds spokeswoman insists the company is firmly against children smoking. Los Angeles, from the outside, it looks like your everyday Hollywood gala. Flash bulbs popping as stretch limos filled with celebrities pull up. But the person being honored at this star-studded event was the Dalai Lama, the exiled spiritual and political leader of Tibet. Familiar faces came to listen to the Nobel Peace Prize winner who spoke of patience, peace of mind, harmony, and his homeland. Now for an update on sports, let's check in with Mark Berman. Okay, Mike. Giants shut out the Astros 1-0 in the Dome. Bill Swift with the five-hit shutout. Pete Harnish gets the loss, even though he pitched a solid game, giving up just seven hits in eight innings and the one run. On the scoreboard, you see the Astros score. Uh, Montreal has beaten Atlanta. The Giants now just two and a half back of fir the first-place Braves. The Cubs beat the Cardinals. Philadelphia and uh, Florida are in, in the 11th inning tied at 1. New York has beaten Pittsburgh 6-5-10. to five and 10. The Dodgers over the Reds 3-1. to one. Cincinnati has lost 12 straight. Colorado leads San Diego 4 nothing in the 5th. In the American League, it was Detroit over Milwaukee. Cleveland beat Baltimore. Minnesota takes, takes care of New York. Boston has beaten Toronto in 10. Seattle is shutting out Texas or leads Texas 5 nothing in the 2nd. KC, Oakland, no score in the 4th. Chicago, California also scoreless in the 3rd. That's it. Thank you very much, Mark. Okay. Well, we have said goodbye to summer, but not the uh, high temperature. That's right, Mike. It's officially autumn. Uh, about two and a half hours ago, it became autumn, no longer summer, but we can't get quite a, uh, rid of all the summer-like weather. In fact, the weather forecast for tonight still resembles uh, summertime. There's your forecast for tonight. We'll have mostly fair skies for a while, but then toward morning, some increasing cloud cover and some increasing chances for some patchy fog toward morning, a low of 74 and a light and variable wind. Then for tomorrow, some patchy morning fog to start the day, and that will yield to a mixture of sun and clouds, a 20% chance of showers, and look at that reading, a high of 94 degrees for a high temperature tomorrow, Mike. But as we mentioned on the 9 p.m. Uh, weathercast, uh, next week we might see a change. All right, hope for the best. Thank you, Robert. Rain or shine, Fox News, 7 a.m. starts your weekday off on the right foot. Linda Cheek Heinrich, Jose Guignan, and Matt Levine have everything you need before you head out the door. Join them for Fox News 7 a.m. But right now, let's go over to Fran. Okay, thanks, Mike. It may seem to be the perfect crime. It doesn't require a deadly weapon or even a lot of skill. But the crime of stealing electricity is one for which we all pay. Recently, HLMP investigators moved in on a man who has allegedly been stealing electricity for years. Our Randy Wallace was there when this unusual bust occurred. He brings us an exclusive look on tomorrow night's City Under Siege, but that's all for tonight. I'm Fran Fawcett. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for getting involved in the war against drugs and crime. Now stay with us because the $10 million live lotto drawing is next. A 13-year-old male. Did you get the call in the shooting on uh, no? Yeah, he had a bite with uh, DPS local. Okay. We are the only people who have talked to him. And yeah, we should say so right up front. Right, I guess it should be there. Good evening, and welcome to the official Lotto Texas drawing for September 22nd, 1993, as supervised by Lottery Security and certified by the independent accounting firm of Coopers and Librand. Tonight's Lotto Texas jackpot is an estimated $10 million. Players win prizes by matching three, four, five, or six numbers in any order. Here are tonight's winning numbers. The first number is one. The second is 
49. The third number is 39. The fourth number drawn is number 2. The fifth number is 25. And for the final number drawn tonight, we have number 38. Again, those numbers are 1, 49, 39, 2, 25, 38. If there's no jackpot winner, Saturday's jackpot will be an estimated $18 million.